Everybody, welcome back. My name is Yumble, and this is a normal traffic light. This is a 5 plus 3 asymmetrical road entering the light, two left turn lanes, and a fairly average cycle setup that's timed somewhat loosely. You'll also notice it doesn't look like there's that much traffic. I want to tell you, this is the same map that I've been using to test roundabouts and lights and interchanges and all kinds of stuff. This is a high-density traffic flow that's just being absolutely decimated by this light. I wanted to show you how to set up a basic traffic light that can beat any roundabout handily. Um, not to say that roundabouts don't have benefits, they certainly do, but if a rudimentary traffic light can beat it in a fraction of the space, I think it's worth exploring. I also want to show you how to set up lights on some common interchanges as well uh, to help traffic flow in your city. Everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Yumble. Let's talk about lights. Before I show you how I built this light, I want to show you what's going on in the intersection because I think most of where the light actually gets its power from is how lanes are used when approaching an intersection. So for example here, I'm using a 5 plus 3 asymmetrical road. So 5 lanes in one direction, 3 lanes in the other. The reason I'm using 5 lanes is so we can get some dedicated turning lanes. In this case we have 2 lanes of left turning traffic that are allowed to stack up before going through the intersection two lanes of straight through traffic and one lane of right turning traffic. This is really where the magic occurs. If you removed one of the left turn lanes and one of the straight through lanes, the, the whole operation would collapse. I would say that the way that lanes are used and having dedicated turn lanes is at least as important as the timing of the light itself. So keep that in mind. Sometimes it's not the light that's at fault, sometimes it's the the lanes that are applied and how traffic is allowed to stack up within them. And now onto the traffic light itself. So we're going to go to Traffic Manager, click on Timed Traffic Light, and then select our junction. Uh, set up Timed Traffic Light will bring up the next menu, and you'll see this is just four red lights. We can't actually change anything just yet, because the next thing to do is hit Add Step. Now, starting from scratch, all of the lights are singular and will control all of the lanes. I just want to break this out by clicking Change Mode. I'm going to click it three times, which will open it up so we have left, straight, and right turns controlled independently on all sides. So the standard, the way I approach just a standard four-way intersection, assuming everything's balanced and all the lanes are the same and whatnot, this will certainly vary in your city if you have asymmetrical traffic or more traffic that wants to turn left or right or what have you. But that's also the benefit of the light is you can flex this configuration to be whatever you need. But the way I generally recommend doing it is picking a minimum, a low minimum. So I'm going to pick eight for this, which is fairly low, and then a max time of, say, 20 seconds. Uh, the light... The phase that the light is currently in will always last at least 8 seconds, but no more than 20 seconds, but it may also change in between as affected by these things here. So after minimum time has elapsed, switch to next step if, I'm going to leave this on default, more waiting than driving, and I'm going to turn the flow sensitivity down to 3, uh, 0.3 rather, which will yield very long green slash red phases. So it's erring on the side of staying where it is. It's not going to change too quickly in between those times. I'm good with that. So phase one of the whole light, as far as the actual greens and reds go, I'm going to do opposing left turns. And I've picked these arbitrarily. I could have done the other side, but um, I'm doing these. So that's great. So we've got our... Oop, there it is. We've got our left turn set up. So this is these two left lanes. This one corresponds to these two. On the other sides where I've done nothing, we can actually activate their right-hand turn uh, greens because the left turning traffic here doesn't conflict with the right turning traffic here. We can allow those to, to do their thing. And I'm going to hit add on that left turn cycle. Now we have to do the opposing left turns. So I'm going to hit add step. And you'll notice it carried over our, our timings, 8 to 20, more waiting than driving, 0.3. That all carried over from cycle one. And we just have to change this to the opposite. So I'm going to allow, uh, I'm going to turn off the lefts and allow them to turn right. I'm going to turn off the rights and allow them to turn left. So that's great. I'm going to hit add. That looks correct to me. So there's two phases out of four done. Now we have to address the straight through traffic. 
So my logic here is I've already got Elaine turning right, right in front of me. So these, both of these opposing sides are turning right already. I'm going to hit add step and I'm going to allow the lanes with right turning traffic to go straight. So we're going to have two right turning phases in a row, which is great. There's only one right turn lane, so it's nice to have a continuous right turn that's just allowed to, to go nuts. So that's great. Uh, I'm going to turn off the lefts for this traffic. These entire sides now must stop because straight through and right turning traffic is going on both sides. I'm going to hit add. And one more step. I'm going to hit add step again with the same settings that you can change if you need to. <laughs> I'll let them carry over for now. I'm going to stop our going traffic and let our straight and right turns for these sides go. And that will be our final phase. I'm going to hit start to allow the light to begin running. And I'm going to unpause the game and uh, let traffic start arriving and we'll see how this handles it. I think this looks really good overall. Uh, things that you may notice in your own traffic lights, if you see that there's a disproportionate amount of traffic stacking up in one lane, let's say you have a single dedicated left turn lane and it's backing up, you might have to split that into two left turn lanes to help traffic uh, stack up closer to the light. Or maybe if on one side I had more traffic that wanted to go straight through than left, maybe I would reallocate this left turn lane to be a straight through instead so that traffic can once again stack up closer to the light while waiting so when the light turns green the line is in theory uh, a third as as long basically we want traffic to stack up as uh, symmetrically as possible when possible and you can also manipulate the speed limits of roads to get some pretty good results if you find that uh Let's say I don't like that this straight lane is, is stacking up. I can always make the speed limit of this one slightly faster to trick the simulation into doing what I want. Or in this situation, the reality is I should probably change that left turning lane to be a straight through so that we can, in theory, move this stack of traffic up to the light. Something like that. But yeah, as your, as your city evolves, you may have to change things. The timings may have to change but I'm, I'm a big fan of changing the composition of the roads and adding and removing lanes in order to get some great results. Here we have a single point urban interchange. I actually have a video dedicated to how to build this one, but today we're gonna focus on the light. All of the ends are free flowing, so there's no lights required at any of the end pieces, but all of the lefts do converge at this center point here. So it's actually a three cycle light, one cycle for left turning traffic coming off the arterial, one for highway left turns, and a third to allow straight through traffic to pass. This thing moves a ton of traffic and I wanna show you how to set up that light today. Building the light from scratch, we're gonna select traffic manager, timed traffic light, and click on our junction to set up the timed traffic light. Uh, default lights are gonna pop up and we're gonna hit add step for this one, the modes of the arterial lights need to be changed, but the left turns from the highway can stay as a single light. So we're going to swap these modes to dedicated left turns. That's all that matters. As long as there's a dedicated left turn on the arterial, we're good. Timing wise, I'm just going to do 5 to 15, which is kind of a good, rather low amount, I'd say. And same settings as last time, more waiting than driving, which is default, and a flow sensitivity of 0.3. The reason I tend to pick point three is because that's what comes up with a control clicked traffic, uh, traffic light. If you control click with a timed traffic light, it'll do this setting. So I've, I've grown accustomed to it, though the cycles do need to be custom for this. So five to 15 is good. The first phase that we will do will be greens coming off the highway. So our left turning traffic from the highway can come on. We're gonna hit add and add next step. That traffic must now stop so that traffic entering the highway can turn left. So we're going to allow our dedicated left turns going onto the highway to happen. And that's great. And this is a three phase light. After we've added that step, add the third step. I'm going to stop that left turning traffic and we're, we're going to allow the straight through traffic to go. I know this says straight and right. Really, it's just straight through. 
And that is th the third phase. So hit add. I'm going to hit start on the light. And I'm going to let it run for a minute to uh, get some traffic in it. Overall, I would say that is working great. Uh, I think that the left turn cycles can stay short. I might recommend increasing the timing on the straight through traffic on the arterial, but uh, for now it's actually working great. Of course, this is, a, this is an interchange, so it's a service interchange designed for getting traffic on and off the highway. This is a much higher flow than a, uh, than a typical four-way intersection or a roundabout or anything like that. So this is not even in the same league, but it is important to know how to set up a light on an interchange like this. Uh, let's do another one. We have now arrived at my personal favorite, the partial cloverleaf. This one allows for massive traffic flow and only a two cycle light, which is wonderful. Uh, basically, the loops are where the magic is happening on this one. Loops are beautiful because they turn left turns into right turns, and it's happening on two different sides opposing. So this is actually a B4 partial cloverleaf. Letter B, number four, bingo. Uh, let me show you how to set up the light. The partial cloverleaf light setup is probably the most unique that we're going to go over today because it actually requires a junction, which means two separate intersections working together. So I'm going to click on our timed traffic light tool. I'm, I'm going to click both of the nodes that are involved at the ends of the partial cloverleaf, set up timed traffic light. I'm going to hit add step. Here's our standard four light configuration. We are gonna change the modes on two of them though. So we're gonna change the mode uh, on the arterial side incoming and the arterial outgoing as well. Make sure to make all these changes on both junctions. If you forget to change the mode until after you've started setting it up, you may have to reset these lights entirely. So I'm trying to save you a, a little bit of trouble. But the way that this works out, uh, I'm gonna use a minimum time of nine and a maximum time of nine as well. Not 19, nine. What this is gonna do is make it so the light is actually really dumb, but it's gonna work exactly the way I need it to. So it's only gonna run for nine seconds and then it's gonna change every single time, disregarding this whole section. This section only affects things in the in-between time. So we're gonna do a hard nine on that one. And there are certain lights that can always be green on this thing. So traffic exiting the highway, merging can always be green. Lane math is good there. Traffic leaving the interchange can also be green on the straight through as there's no traffic crossing over it. So that's great. Also, the right turn for traffic entering the highway can always be green. I think that's basically the... I think that's basically it. Those can always be green, so... Right traffic, always green. Traffic from the highway, always green. Straight through traffic, leaving the interchange, always green as well. For the cycles, it's a two cycle light. So maybe the first cycle can be uh, through traffic coming off, the, coming off the arterial. So through traffic, straight through is allowed to go. Everyone else must stop. The left turn has to stop because it conflicts and uh, this must stop as well because lane math wise, I've got two lanes coming across and one lane merging with those two lanes. So I'm going to make them stop for this one. No right on red in this case. That's fine. Your results may vary if you change the lane math. So straight through, left must stop. Turning from the highway must stop as well. That is phase one. Phase two, we're going to hit add step. We are going to stop the straight through traffic. We're going to allow the left turn. So now this traffic is stopped. The left turn is going and conflict free. Now that this traffic is stopped, this traffic can come in from the highway. That should be good. And of course, this is also minimum time of nine, maximum time of nine. So we are going to allow our left turn. We are going to stop the through traffic and we're gonna allow traffic from the highway to come in as well. That should be good. I'm gonna hit add, start, and I'm gonna run this for a minute and let some traffic build up. I 
I think this is about as built up as traffic is going to get on this thing. It is, it is destroying traffic. It's great. Love a partial cloverleaf. I want to explain why I timed it the way I did, though. So it's a two-phase light, and we've just started state one. You can see in the, in the green there, we're at state one, nine seconds to go. So this traffic is about to be allowed to go across the bridge. What I've done is through trial and error, I've kind of established how long it takes for traffic to cross the bridge so that this light, this left turning light, which is currently red, will be green by the time they reach it. So let's let's see what that looks like. They're they're green now. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Now we're changing. So by the time this fellow on the motorcycle gets here, it turns green. And as far as the left turning traffic knows, it's a one cycle light. As far as they care about, they get to enter the junction and turn left and get out of there as soon as they got there. So it just swings back and forth between those two phases, allowing traffic in, allowing traffic to turn left immediately, and then uh, the cycle continues. And there's always plenty of time for this right turning traffic. I'm not too worried about them. The through traffic and the left turning traffic are the main concerns here. But that is my logic when setting up a partial cloverleaf. Everyone, thank you so much for checking out how I approach setting up lights in City Skylines. I think the best part of the game is the traffic simulator, and timed lights add a lot of flexibility and a, and a whole new mini game to the game at large, so I would strongly recommend using them in your city. Feel free to subscribe here. I try to make two YouTube videos a week, uh, tutorials, builds, whatnot. We also have a community Discord, so feel free to come by and ask questions in the Discord and post pictures of your city, all, all that fun stuff. I also stream twice a week on Twitch. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.